What's up dorks? Today's video is about solutions. There's the solution to all of your problems and problems you didn't even know you had. Let's go. Does this look familiar to you? We've got support requests here and this is a test and another test and still testing and I should delete these. Like, I'm not really sure what's going on here. We've got this support request list and it's mixed in with all of these test submissions. So we have one live app that someone made a new feature on and they're trying to test it out and make sure everything works. This is a mess is what this is. <laughs> and solutions can help you not only get rid of these, but prevent them from being mixed together. We'll do our development in one place, we'll test in a different SharePoint list altogether, and our support request list remains pure and not messy and mixed in with our new test submissions. So if you're currently in this situation, let's try to get you out of it. So we'll go to make.powerapps.com and then come over to solutions. And here we are, here's our list of solutions. Let's make a new one. So we'll make a new one and we can call it support request. Yeah. From within a solution, you can collaborate with others by both working in this on the same flows and power apps together. And you can share things like environment variables and different connection references that allow you to connect to say SharePoint or uh, Dataverse itself. Um, and they're really useful for development together. So you do your development within a solution and then once it's ready to go, you kind of can, you can export it and put it in your test environment. And this allows you to do your development on the side while test is done somewhere separate. So why don't we add the flows that take these submissions and stick them in our SharePoint list? Um, so we'll come down here to automation and we will click on Cloudflow. So this one is also outside Dataverse and we will upload that one and add that into our solution as well. I almost want like the Jeopardy theme song while I sit here and wait and stare. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 do. Where you at? There it is. So we've got some Canvas apps in here and a flow, and we're ready to package it up and send it off. So we'll come back out here to our full list of solutions. The one we just made was support request. If we go ahead and click on it, we can export the solution. So you'll go ahead and have to publish all of your changes. So anything that you've made is going to become live. So if you haven't published your app, then, and you've made changes since then, they'll now be live changes. So we'll click publish and then we wait again. That's the key to solutions, patience. Patience is the solution to probably most of your problems. All right, so now our stuff has been published and we're ready to go. So we'll hit next at the bottom here. It automatically increments the version number so we don't have to change that at all. Now we get to choose between exporting as managed or unmanaged. And a good way to think about these as a brief overview is that managed is locked. You can't make changes on your things in there. So if it's for testing and you're not going to make changes, then export it as managed. If it's the final version of your app that end users are gonna uh, interact with, export it as managed because you shouldn't be making changes without testing them. So if we're actually going to be making changes and it's our development version, then export it as unmanaged. So today we're gonna export as managed and we'll come down here, click export and it will think again. All right, now we've got this little gray bar at the top here and it's telling us that it's currently exporting it. It's doing some work in the background. We'll let it think and it will turn a nice green color once it's done. So now this has turned a nice green color. It said it was done successfully and we have to download it. So we'll go ahead and click download and it'll say it's downloaded. Tip for you is to always clear this bar because once it doesn't clear itself and 
once you've downloaded it, you leave and come back, you have the option to download it again. I've accidentally downloaded the wrong version before and imported the incorrect version to a testing environment. So always clear your banner once you're done. And now that we've downloaded our solution as a zip file, we can import it into a different environment. This is our testing environment for our support request app. And we can go up here to import solution to bring it in. So we'll go ahead and browse and we'll look for that zip file that we just downloaded. All right, so we find our zip file and up here it's named with the name of our solution, it makes it easy to find, and then the version number and whether it's managed or unmanaged. So go ahead and click next and wait again. How many times do we have to wait? Many. All right, so now that we've got the green light here, it's importing successfully, it shows up within our list. So we need a way to tell our test solution to point at a different data source, a different SharePoint list than our development or our production solution. So we'll do that through environment variables. We'll go up here to the new, come down to more, and then click on environment variables. From here, we can set a display name and choose a data type and we'll want data source. From here, you can configure it to point to a SharePoint list specifically or to a variety of other connectors. For more information on environment variables, Mike already has a video and a blog out for that. Go check that over and he'll give you some more information on that. But one trick that I'll show you is that before you export your solution, come down here and remove the current value from the solution it'll still be there but it will show that it was removed but can be added back in and if it's empty if the environment variable is empty upon import you'll get a prompt to update it solutions also come with a couple other features that i'll touch on one of my favorites and mitch's favorites are child flows he thinks they're the best flows i tend to agree go check out his blog and his video on those these aren't available outside of solutions. Essentially, you're able to call another flow to run from a different flow. So it's pretty nifty for doing a lot of repetitive actions or some involved steps that you need to do. Besides these features, there are just a few limitations of solutions and Microsoft has written up some documentation on that. So we'll toss the link to that uh, down below. It's got some workarounds if you happen to run into any of these. So that's solutions for you. They have great features. They're an awesome tool. They allow you to package everything together, move it around where you need to, and hopefully they are the solution to any problems you're running into. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment. If you're new to these tools and want to learn more, I wanna let you know about the Learning Center on our website. So if you head over to bulb.digital and click learn, scroll down and you'll see all these tools. In there, you'll see we have a ton of blogs, podcasts, and resources, all 100% free for you to learn more about SharePoint, Power Automate, and Outlook. And we'll leave a link in the description.